The new Mercedes EQXX is either the weirdest or the coolest car I've ever seen. And it comes with a 1000 kilometer range from a very small battery pack. Now, how exactly did they manage to do this? I've got to say, it's an extremely impressive technology. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, and you're watching the YouTube channel that makes more videos about electric cars, batteries, and all those good things than anyone else. I just want to say a big thank you and a big welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you here, and welcome back to everyone else. 2022 is going to be one amazing year, and I can't wait to bring you all the new stuff I've seen coming out, I've seen hinted about, I've seen discussions on new technology that's just on the horizon, that's been worked on, and that I haven't yet reported on. I can't wait to share that all with you. Now, Mercedes with the EQXX. I've got to say, this is one weird and wacky looking car. It's either super weird or super awesome. I can't quite decide which, but the technology in this car it's just plain awesome, full stop. Now, so you don't have to wait for it, I'm just gonna to get to the fact here that I think whatever they've done with this battery, nobody knows, but it's got 400 watt per kilo of energy density. That is the highest energy density of any car in the industry. Now, I know, I know, they haven't produced any of these yet, but if they actually make these cars next year with this technology, wow, this thing is truly insane and truly wacky. And truly cool. And I think that this kind of marks this new era, doesn't it? Tesla Model X Plaid, Model S Plaid. We've got Lucid making the incredible Lucid Air. We've got some amazing cars in China. Then we've got this incredible EQXX here in Germany. And you know what? All of a sudden, ICE cars are just so freaking boring. They are. They just, there's nothing they can do that even remotely interests me anymore. And this is coming from someone who has been a petrol head for I don't know, Since ever since I was a little boy, I used to read motoring magazines. I'd buy every motoring magazine I could possibly afford or get my hands onto, borrow them from the library, read every... I used to know the details on every single car model you could possibly buy anywhere in the United States or in Australia. By the way, why is that? I love the American cars, still do, by the way. But now, to be honest, ICE vehicles, wow, there's no joy in them for me anymore because they're just boring in comparison to what's going on. In the electric car industry, it's like massive dopamine hits just hitting me every day. Look at this new stuff. Look at this new stuff. Wow. Anyway, Mercedes is using some interesting technology to make this car work. And that is why it really is a game changer. Now, this is clearly the most efficient electric car ever. Well, I mean, proper car, not one of these kind of wacky looking things like the car I just ordered in the United States, which is pretty cool, by the way, but it's not really a proper car. I'll put a link in the description, by the way, to that video. You should check out, check out the car that I've ordered. Tell me what you think about it, by the way, in the comment section below. Now, this is super efficient thanks to its aerodynamic body and its flat underbody. The EQXX has a tapered teardrop style body with a rear track that's 50 millimeters narrower than the front. Now, the concept's frontal area is said to be less than the CLA and some smart cars. Now, they haven't given us information on the total length of the car, but the wheelbase is 2.8 meters, meaning there's less space between the wheels than a C-Class or a BMW 3 Series. Now, one way they've gotten this range, this insane range out of this, well, fairly big vehicle is by putting, they're sort of cheated, to be honest, a little bit. They put on their Bridgestone Turenza Eco low rolling resistance tires that have aerodynamically designed sidewalls and are paired to 20 inch forged magnesium wheels with wind cheating covers. Now I like the covers, they make total sense. Why would you not put covers on wheels if you can get some extra free money out of it? It makes sense. Now, in its most efficient setting, with all the cooling shutters closed and the diffusers retracted, the EQXX has a coefficient of drag of just 0.17. To put that into context, the latest S-Class has a CD of 0.22, while the all-electric EQS has a drag rating of 0.2. 0 0.17, very, very hard to do. The car I just ordered, by the way, though, is only 0.13. So it's good, but not quite as good as the car I'm going to get from the US that has a 1,000-mile range, by the way. Insane. Now, a cooling plate is built into the EQXX's flat underbody, 
and takes advantage of all the cold air rushing underneath the sedan while heat pumps coupled to the electric motor help to keep the cabin toasty while minimizing energy use. Obviously, heat pumps are good, but they're not some revolutionary new thing. You know, any Tesla comes with them now. Lots of other car makers have them as well. Now, all of these design choices help to cut a consumption to 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And fitted with a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack, the Vision EQXX has a range of 1,000 kilometers. Now, thanks to a partnership with HPP, the EQXX's battery has an energy density of 100 watts per kilo. According to the automaker, this is because of a new anode chemistry and more tightly packed cells with electrical and electronic components moved into a separate compartment. Maximum system voltage is an eye-poppingly high 900 volt. Now you can see why they've done this, right? Moving the electrical and electronic components into a separate department means that you can put more energy density into the battery and decrease the risk of fire. Obviously, the higher energy density batteries have a higher risk of fire. Packing more power, more power into a battery is going to make it more combustible. So putting the electronic components into a separate compartment decreases that risk. It's a good idea, I think. So these advances mean the battery is 100 kilowatt hours, right? But it only weighs 495 kilos, which is groundbreaking. Now, in order to improve range even more and potentially self-charge the car, there is 117 solar cells on the roof that feed into a special lithium iron phosphate battery powering the climate control system, as well as the lights, the infotainment setup, and other accessories. Now, Mercedes say that on a sunny day, the solar panel can add up to 25 kilometers of driving range. Not really all that much in my view. I'm not sure if the extra weight from the panel would offset the benefit of 25 kilometers of range. Don't know, we'll see. Now, with its focus on range, it's no surprise to find out the EQXX has just one motor for the rear axle with only 150 kilowatt. Obviously, having one motor makes the car lighter and gives it that extra range. Now, apparently, the total weight of this vehicle is 1,750 kilos. It's light, but it's not that light. It could be lighter, I think. Maybe there's some other things they can do. Maybe have a carbon body, something like that. Now, unlike hyper-efficient cars that we've seen, the EQXX doesn't skimp on luxury. As evidenced by the full-width dashboard screen and the intricate cabin details, to be honest, the interior, in my view, looks, uh, well, pretty freaking awesome. It's super bling. It's kind of retro bling. It's cool. I like it. Now, the seats are clad in some kind of material that's actually made from cactus, while other areas employ a different leather alternative made from the root system of mushrooms. So the interior is made from mushrooms and cactus. There you go. In addition to that, the floor mats are made entirely from bamboo fiber, and other parts of the interior are made from PET bottle materials, including the floor, the doors, and the headliner. Now, I'm not sure about the design, Obviously, they've designed it this way for hyper-efficiency, for getting that low aerodynamic efficiency. But I think I would change, personally, the design a little bit to make it look potentially a bit nicer. But that's just my view. Let me know what you think about the design in the comment section below. That said, this is an exciting new direction for Mercedes-Benz. And I think the production version will probably look a little bit cooler, a little bit better. But the emphasis on hyper-efficiency from companies now is really interesting to see. And I think this is the battleground for car companies in the future. Now, the 1,000 kilometers between charging is impressive. It puts most ICE cars to shame. However, the beauty of electric cars is that we can put an end to the trade-off between power and efficiency. We can finally have our cake and eat it too. As you've seen by a number of different cars now that have really good efficiency, huge ranges, and also a lot of power. Now, which car might I specifically be referencing here? I'll put a link in the description below to the car I'm talking about. It's made by a Chinese company called GAC. Not only will it cost probably less than half the price of this car, it also has four times the power and a similar range, but comes in the kind of body shape most people want, an SUV. Now tell me, what do you think about this car? Do you like it, hate it, love it, don't care? Let me know in the comment section below. Have a great day and I'll see you again.
on the next one. Bye-bye.